Mtazamaji popote ulipo hujambo karibu kwenye taarifa za mbiu ya KTN la siri hii ikiwa ni tarehe 15 mwezi wa Novemba mwaka 2016 nite Ali Manzu. Mtazamaji washukiwa wanane wanazuiliwa na polisi baada ya maafisa wa polisi wa kushirikiana na wenzao kutoka kitengo cha ujasusi ya CID walipofanya operesheni mjini Nakuru kwenye karakana moja na kunasa magari manane ambayo yalikuwa yakitumiwa kusafirisha mitungi haramu ya gesi katika sehemu ya viwandani magari hayo yalikuwa na mitungi 956 ya gesi Operesheni hiyo ilifuatia taarifa za wakazi ambao waliwapa polisi habari za kuendeshwa kwa biashara hiyo haramu kwenye karakana hiyo ndipo maafisa wa ujasusi na polisi mjini Nakuru wakaanza kazi mara moja wakiongozwa na mkuu wa polisi kaunti ya Nakuru Joshua Omukata Somebody is refilling and selling petroleum gas at industrial area here in Nakuru without a license Upon that information our officers managed to get there and uh, were able to find eight vehicles with gas already filled and others not filled Kila gari lilikuwa limejazwa mitungi ya gesi hadi pomoni tayari kufikishwa kwenye soko kwa mauzo Kulingana na polisi miongoni mwa waliotiwa nguvuni ni mmiliki wa kampuni hiyo inayoendesha biashara hiyo haramu hususan wakati wa usiku na kuhatarisha maisha yao eight people along with the owner of the business were arrested that we are holding them for further investigation and later arraigned before court kulingana na uchunguzi wa awali ni kana kwamba biashara hiyo imekuwa ikifanywa kwa muda mrefu nyakati za usiku na usambazaji unafanywa kukipambazuka sehemu mbalimbali mbali mjini Nakuru na viunga vyake The gas is being supplied to different areas as you can see these vehicles behind us are not coming from the same place. That simply means that uh, the gas is being supplied to other areas originating from this place. Maafisa wa polisi kutoka Nairobi wanaendelea na operesheni hizo ambazo zilianza hapa jijini. Washukiwa hao wanatarajiwa kufikishwa kortini pindi uchunguzi kamili utakapokamilika. Chama cha Waipa kimeshikilia kwamba kinasubiri kuwasikiliza wanachama wake waasi ambao chama kinafikiria kuwachukulia hatua. Katibu wa chama hicho seneta Hassan Omar amesema kwamba chama kinawapa muda wa kufika mbele ya kamati ya nidhamu chama ni humo ili kuelezea upande wao juu ya tuhuma dhidi yao kwamba wanaendeleza sera za chama cha jubilii. Aliyasema hayo kwenye mkutano na wanahabari mapema hii leo hapa jijini Nairobi. who had been summoned asked for more time and more time was granted by the disciplinary committee and they will therefore be appearing again uh, before the disciplinary committee on the 24th of November uh, at, upon which time then we shall seek to have a report from the disciplinary committee as to what uh, recommendations have been made against the seven persons who are listed in that committee uh, ideally we were to have the, if you look remember the dates we actually told you that we were also going to have on the 15th the national governing council to ratify decisions of the disciplinary committee so today the report was to come and tomorrow uh, this uh, we were to ratify but because the disciplinary committee has not yet presented that report therefore this meeting had to proceed with other items of the agenda so anybody who has reported anything to the contrary is false to that extent uh, where the, the that this this was purely a routine uh, uh, disciplinary committee i mean uh, a neck meeting secondly We we have uh, we want to reiterate again that we have the national delegates conference on of to 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 validate or to to endorse the party leader as the presidential flag bearer for the code coalition on the 10th of December uh, of uh, this year you do realize that is that's also an extremely symbolic date that is also the day the international human rights day You do realize that Wiper right now is moving towards social justice, towards a more equal society, towards a more humane society, towards a society where all Kenyans, you know, feel that there is no discrimination whatever grounds. So therefore it is it is quite pragmatic for us also to symbol, symbolically 
uh, launch or declare our presidential candidate on that very symbolic day. Therefore, uh, that, for, for that purpose, this national daily, this uh, committee, uh, this next meeting today, uh, exhaustive, exhaustively uh, discussed about uh, the, the, that, dis that uh, national delegates conference, which will be on the 10th of this month, okay. of next month. Rais Uhuru Kenyatta ameondoka nchini mapema asubuhi ya leo akielekea jijini Marrakech nchini Morocco kaskazini mwa bara la Afrika. Rais Kenyatta alisnikizwa na mkuu wa majeshi nchini General Samson Mathethe katika uwanja wa ndege wa Jomo Kenyatta dhumuni kuu la ziara yake likiwa ni mkutano mabadiliko ya hali ya anga na mazingira ulimwenguni. Hata hivyo ziara hiyo ya rais pia inatazamiwa kuendeleza kampeni ya kidiplomasia ambayo Kenya inaifanya kutafuta uungwaji mkono na mataifa ya bara la Afrika ili kuteuliwa kwa waziri wa mambo ya nje balozi Amina Muhammad kuwa mwenyekiti wa muungano wa Afrika AU. Uchaguzi wa nafasi hiyo utafanyika mwisho wa mwezi wa Januari mwaka ujao jijini Addis Ababa nchini Ethiopia. Tuelekee katika kaunti ya Kisumu na sasa wakazi wa sehemu ya Kisumu ambao wametimia umri wa kuchukua vitambulisho vya kitaifa watakamatwa endapo watapatikana bila ya vitambulisho hilo ndilo tangazo ama onyo kutoka kwa kamishna wa kaunti hiyo Maalim Muhammad aliyasema hayo jijini Kisumu mapema hii leo baada ya kubuni kamati ya kaunti ya usimamizi wa shughuli ya utoaji wa vitambulisho ni taarifa yake mwanahabari Rashid Ronald Kamishina huyo wa kaunti ya Kisumu alikuwa amefanya mkutano na wadogo wake kutoka wa kaunti huku swala kuu likiwa kutafuta njia za kuhakikisha kila aliyefikia umri wa kuchukua kitambulisho anafanya hivyo na alibuni kamati ya shughuli hiyo lakini huku yeye na kundi lake wakitafakari swala hilo mambo sio mazuri hapa Kisumu we have so many uncollected ID cards Kisumu county alone we have over 11000 728 ID cards that is yet to be collected na sasa ole wao wale ambao hawana vitambulisho hapa Kisumu licha ya kutimiza umri unaohitajika if you are cornered in any part of this county and you have no ID card the best we can do is to get hold of you and you become a guest of the state aida kamishna huyo amesema watachapisha majina ya wale wote ambao wamedinda kuchukua vitambulisho vyao kutoka kwa ofisi ya msajili licha vitambulisho hivyo kuwepo in terms of sending text messages we now want to give those id cards to the chiefs and assistant chiefs right at the grassroots so that members of the public can easily come and collect their id cards we have also agreed as a way forward We need to write the names of all those who have not collected their ID cards and display them on all public notice boards for purposes of sensitization. Swala la vitambulisho ni nyeti sana hasa wakati ambapo uchaguzi mkuu unakaribia. Rashid Ronald, KTN News, katika kaunti ya Kisumu. Kwingineko waziri wa elimu Fred Matiangi ametangaza mpango wa serikali wa kutenga fedha zitakazotumiwa kwa upanuzi wa shule za sekondari kote nchini. Waziri Matiangi amesema kuwa shule za sekondari hazina miundo msingi ifayo hivyo basi kukosa nafasi ya kuwachukua wanafunzi wanaoendelea kuongezeka kila mwaka. Shule zilizo na nafasi chache zaidi ni zile za kitambo ambazo iwapo hazitapanuliwa basi wanafunzi watakao jiunga na kidato cha kwanza mwaka ujao hawatakuwa na nafasi. Matiangi alijiunga na walimu kusimamia mtihani inayoendelea KCSE katika shule ya sekondari ya wavulana ya Njoro iliyoko katika kaunti ya Nakuru. Wakati huo huo afisa mkuu wa baraza la mitihani nchini Profesa George Magoha alikuwa jijini Kisumu alikosimamia mitihani hiyo. And as I told the principals this morning before we opened uh, the container here, we've been moving around uh, the country, especially because we want to work together. You know, when our principals are out at five in the morning, we can't be sleeping. 
that, that, that's not a sensible way of uh, doing things. We are a team and we are working together. That the exam has been compromised, that is not true. And we would want you very kindly to correct that impression because you have now confirmed, isn't it? Do you have any clarification you'd want to, uh, to get? Because I had said if this was breached, somebody was going to pay for it. That one I said even yesterday. But you have seen that it was not a breach. Tukirejea hapa jijini Nairobi, Banada Moshere huyu akiwa ni mhasibu alifukua uozo katika wizara ya afya uliopelekea kupotea kwa fedha za wizara hiyo ameitetea ripoti yake akisema kwamba ilifanywa kwa kuzingatia misingi yote. Alisema maswali ambayo aliyoulizwa hayakuwa kwa wizara ya afya pekee bali ubadhirifu ambao ulioko wa fedha uliokifiri zaidi katika asasi mbalimbali za serikali amepuzilia mbali madai kwamba anatumiwa na upande wa upinzani hivi ndivyo kikao chake na kamati maalum ya seneti ambayo inahusika na masala ya afya kilivyokuwa mapema hii leo maybe before you comment uh, madam chair let him finish his point the point you are getting is that you cannot procure unless there is money according to the law. Yes. That's what you're trying to say. Yes. Which is the other point? Which is the other point? Or that, that's what you wanted to say? Yeah, that's what I wanted to Very say, good. Madam Chair, Vice Chair. In, in your internal auditing, if it occurs to you that there is some supplementary estimates that has been done and uh, there are no forgers. What do you do in such situation? Because you should, if I'm the auditor, then I should be able to take a decision or alarm, notify, let people know what happened. So in your situation, what happened to the estimates of 350 million which was fully expanded and no pay, payment vouchers. Um, you see, when we were doing this audit, it's after the end of the financial year. And as I said, this was a compliance audit which you were informing the cabinet that these ones do not comply with the law. It is not, not only supposed to take action by then, when you inform the, the, the management, they can correct that in the future. Very so well. that in the future we should not go the same way. Very well. Uh, let, let's acknowledge the presence of uh, Senator Leshore with us. Uh, he's here. Welcome. Um, now, yes, Senator Mvita. Thank you, Chair. Um, as an auditor, what are the red flags you noted uh, with the companies that were paid from the supplementary estimates? Uh, I did not see red flags in the companies, but the red flags you're talking about here is on the issue of the two consignments. Very well. here, here you are. Uh, that you have uh, this consignment which is being procured by with the global funds and you're also procuring the same and they are being uh, they are being warehoused in the same place so purely news was to alert the cabinet secretary and the management that be look at this area because that is our role he cannot take in action apart from telling the management here, check this place because it could be, it, can, it will happen this way. You know, um, purely that is what we are alerting. 
Na mtazamaji ndivyo hali ilivyokuwa mapema leo kwenye kikao hicho cha kamati maalum kuhusiana na mambo ya afya kamati maalum kutoka kwa bunge la seneti. Hivi sasa mtazamaji basi moja kwa moja acha nikupeleke hadi katika uwanja wa Kasarani ambako mechi ya kirafiki kati ya timu ya taifa ya Kenya Harambe Stars pamoja na timu ya taifa ya Liberia wanaojulikana kama Lone Stars wanaendelea na mechi yao ya kirafiki ambayo ilianza mapema hii leo mwendo wa mchana huu mtazamaji kumbuka hii ni mechi ya kirafiki ambayo imeandaliwa na hivi sasa kufikia hivi sasa mechi hiyo bado matokeo ni bila kwa bila kuna mtu yote ambaye aliona wavu ya mwenzake na kama unavona hapo picha hizo mtazamaji zinakujia kwa isani ya KBC Abu Domaru ya Chezea Slevia Sofia kule Bulgaria. <laughs> Ni timu ambayo ilikuwa inajaribu kuwaiwai, haikuweza kufuzu ila ilikuwa imewahi kwenye yale awamu ya muondoano kuweza kufuzu katika michuano ya Champions League lakini hawakuweza kufuzu. Inacheza ngoma kwa Hilton Valley. Valley akijaribu kuunganisha mpira lakini bado mpira unazidi unatoka nje tena utakuwa na kurushwa. Utakuwa na kurushwa ile mpira mpenzi mtazamaji inakuja na weka ngoma chini anachukua kwa uzuri sana. Nyuma kabisa Osborne Manda na Kosele ngoma anachukua na mchezaji anaoita David Owino Kalaba. Uh, Kalaba anatandaza ngoma moja kwa moja kwake mchezaji anaoita Jokins Atudo. Atudo. Tuone itakuwa kwaje. Mpira unapigwa tena juu kwa juu huko lakini ndio hivyo bado mpira unawekwa chini. Anatuliza Osborne Mande. Anamtaro mwenzake kushoto mwa kiwanja piga hesabu ya kwanza 19 mgongoni Paul Were. Akijaribu lakini bado mpira unazidi unatoka nje. Na mtazamaji Kenya imekuwa na matokeo mazuri katika mechi zake za hivi majuzi kumaanisha kwamba ina imani kwamba mechi hii ya kirafiki pia watafanya vyema zaidi na kuisaidia timu hiyo kupandisha hadhi yake ya soka hapa barani Afrika na hata ulimwengu kwa ujumla. Kumbuka mechi hiyo ama picha hizo ulizoziona hapo ni kwa isani ya KBC ambayo inakuletea mechi hiyo kwa njia moja kwa moja mechi kati ya timu ya taifa ya Kenya Harambe Stars na timu ya taifa ya Liberia Lone Stars ambayo imeanza muda mfupi tu katika uwanja wa Kasarani hapa jijini Nairobi. Kumbuka kwenye taarifa zetu kwa lugha ya Kiswahili baadaye mwendo wa saa moja pale ama vile vile kiwezekana mwanahabari mwenzangu ambaye atachukua hatamu ni Hassan Juma atakuja na kipindi cha zilizala viwanjani pia atakuwa ni mwenye kukuarifu tu na namna mechi hiyo inavyoendelea katika jisa saa moja lijalo lafu pia katika taarifa zetu mwendo wa saa moja taarifa za michezo bila shaka tutakuelezea matokeo kamili ya mechi hii. Kumbuka mtazamaji hii ni mechi ya kirafiki. Tuendelee na taarifa zaidi ambako maafisa wa watoto katika eneo la Imenti kaskazini mwa kaunti ya Meru wameokoa watoto wawili wa umri wa miaka miwili na mwaka mmoja mtawali ya baada ya kutelekezwa na wazazi wao. Watoto hao mtazamaji wote wakiwa wa kiume walipatikana eneo la Gikumene kwenye barabara kuu ya kutoka Meru inayoelekea mjini Embu. Barua ambayo ilipatikana katika mfuko wa mmoja wa watoto hao ilielezea kuwa mama amechoka kuwalea na sasa ni wakati wa baba watoto kuchukua uskani mwisho wa kunukuu. Wazazi wa watoto hao wanasemekana kuzozana mara kwa mara na hii sio mara ya kwanza kwa watoto hao kutelekezwa. Baba watoto wamekana kumla, kumzalisha mwanamke huyo na anataka uchunguzi wa DNA kufanywa deserve a family so if the family cannot be found we also pray for an adoptive family right now we have 27 children we take care of under five years old and again we just pray for mothers please don't abandon your babies they're safe ways to, people will support you people will help you go to your local children's office your local hospital and we just pray for these children to stay safe about one year ago we didn't address this matter again and we summoned the father of the uh, to the children to our office where we want them to get away for hand in this matter. But when the, the uh, mother was requesting that we go for a DNA, because at that very moment the father and the paternity of uh, the children, the mother declined to commit herself for the DNA. So uh, effectively, uh, the land disappeared and could not be traced only later on to come and collect the children. So today we all summoned the person uh, who is sent to be the father of the children. And he came and said, the last time this uh, mother came to this office, I requested that you go for a DNA, and the mother refused to have the DNA done. 
So with me, I am not the father to these children, and I cannot be around to account. So um, at the moment, unless the mother resurfaces so that we go for a DNA, we may not be able to establish the, 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 the true uh, father to the children. But we are still looking for the mother who is still at the lunch, I think somewhere. The mother has been referred, I mean, reported at the police station. Kwingineko mwenyekiti wa mpango wa nyumba kumi nchini Joseph Kaguthi amesema kwamba ukosefu wa kutoa taarifa kwa vyombo vya usalama kumelaumiwa pakubwa kwa matokeo uhalifu sehemu mbalimbali mbali nchini. Utepetevu huo unaochangiwa na baadhi ya raia nchini kutoa taarifa muhimu unatoa fursa kwa wahalifu kuendelea na uhalifu kwa wa Kenya. Ni kwenye kikao cha kuhamasisha maafisa wakuu wa utawala mbinu za kuimarisha usalama katika kata mbalimbali za kaunti saba ambapo mkutano uliofanywa mjini Siolo. Mwenyekiti wa mpango wa kitaifa wa nyumba kumi Joseph Kaguthi alisema mafunzo hayo yatatumiwa na machifu hao kuwasaidia wananchi na mbinu za kutoa taarifa za kuimarisha usalama katika kaunti zao. Tuko na wataalamu wengi sana ambao tumeleta kwa sababu social media itapunguza gharama wakati tunasema mwananchi chukua jukumu lako amekuwa akiwakipiga makelele wananchi wamekuwa akilia ya kwamba tunaripoti kwa polisi na wachukue hatua ama wanataka kuongwa ama wana forget about it hiyo haitaendelea namna hiyo kwa sababu ataonyeshwa mwananchi njia ya kufanya hiyo report bila kujulikana ni report Kaguthi alitoa mfano wa Rais Kinyata kwamba kiini cha ulinzi kinachoanza na kusisitiza hoja ya wananchi kuhusishwa kikamilifu kwenye mpango huo ili waweze kupeana taarifa muhimu za kuimarisha usalama na hata akitaja nambari za simu. Usalama ni jukumu ya kila mwananchi ambaye yuko katika Kenya. Na kwa yeye kufaulu kwa hiyo, kwa hiyo jukumu ni lazima asaidiwe awe vigilant, awe chonjo kwa kila kitu na tumewapa mwito atakuwa akifuata ya kwamba wewe mwananchi ukiona Mungu akuweka uh, patisi sema ukishuku sema na ukisikia sema mpango wa nyumba kumi unadhamiria kuwasaidia na kuwahusisha wa Kenya katika kulinda usalama kwa kutoa taarifa muhimu kwa machifu mitaani kuhusu matukio ya utovu wa usalama na watu wageni wanaozuru mitaa yao Kwingineko mzozo umeibuka baina ya wenyeji wa kaunti ya Samburu na serikali ya kaunti hiyo kuhusu ardhi ambayo imetengewa wanajeshi kufanyia mazoezi yao. Gavana wa kaunti hiyo Moses Lenol Kulala ametangaza kwamba serikali ya kaunti imehiari kutenga ekari elfu moja za ardhi katika eneo la Baragoi, Samburu ya Kaskazini kutoa fursa ya mazoezi ya wanajeshi. Lakini wenyeji katika eneo la Muramara wamepinga uamuzi huo na kusema hawatoruhusu hilo kufanyika. Gavana Lenol Kulala amesema hatua hiyo itaimarisha usalama eneo hilo na kuwa ardhi hiyo itarejeshwa lakini wenyeji wanasisitiza kuwa hawawezi kuondoka. Watu wa Samburu wamefurahi na wajeshi yetu wamepata pahali. Watu kwa nini nasema hivi? Mimi najua ebu fikiria pali baba yako amezaliwa alafu mama yako amezaliwa na wewe ukazaliwa pale na watoto yako wakazaliwa pale kwani wewe utaenda wapi ule mtu ako na akili hawezi kuwatoa hao watu hapa kama wewe uko na akili na wewe ni mzalendo huwezi kutoa hao watu sisi tutahakikisha ya kuwa wasamburu wamefurahi na wanajeshi yetu wamefurahi Usamburu hata ama hapa hata nani alitupa Hapa ni kwetu na hatuwezi enda na nataka tupa msasi wale wako hapa ile report mtapeleka sisi atuhani na atutoki na mtazamaji mzozo huo umekuepo kwa muda mrefu na wenyeji lilonalouliza ni siku gani utakujaisha na kila mtu apate ardhi ambayo atakayokwenda kinyume na kusukumwa kwamba apeane ardhi kwa mafunzo ya wanajeshi mtazamaji unaendelea kutazama taarifa za mbiu ya KTN kwenye muda uso mrefu nitarejea tena tuendelee na taarifa zaidi usiende mbali